is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea. Then the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. GSMC Weird News Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Colleen, and let's just get into some weirdness. So, I was watching cop shows, as I often do, because I love them and I don't know why. And I'm talking like Cops and Live PD and those those kind of shows. I love those shows. Don't know why, I just absolutely do. And I was thinking about what I could talk about this week on the Weird News Podcast. And I thought about, what about some weird, true cop stories. Weird stories that are true that happened to cops or to people with cops. And I thought this would be really interesting and a funny twist. So let's talk about some weird cop stories. Um, Let's go to Colorado. And in Colorado, it is illegal to talk on the phone and text as it is in most uh, states and whatnot. Most places it's illegal to talk on the phone or text on the phone, that kind of thing. So this officer pulls a driver over who had his phone in one hand and like a sports drink in the other hand. So it wasn't like an alcoholic beverage. It was like a Gatorade or something along those lines. Um, and the officer pulls him over, steps out of the vehicle, goes up to the vehicle and says, you do realize you didn't have any hands on the wheels, right? And the driver in a tone that, like, was implying that he was using this as an excuse, said, oh, but I was texting. What? Oh my gosh. This is the most ridiculous thing ever. This goes along with another one that actually, this is one that I found when I was um researching, but this other one I actually saw, and I believe it was on Live PD, and an officer pulls over a car and uh, walks up to the vehicle and says, um, can I see your license? Like they usually do. And he goes, oh, well, I don't have a license. And she's like, okay, well, give me your name. He gives her a name. She walks back to the car, looks him up, goes up there. And she says, you know that your license is provoked and you're not allowed to drive. And he goes, oh, I wasn't driving. I was traveling. What? This is along the same lines as like, why are you using this as an excuse? Because it's not an excuse. It's what you're doing wrong. <laughs> oh, I was texting. And the other one, oh, I was traveling, not driving. And the funny thing is I saw this Life PD video and I was laughing about it. I was like, I can't believe somebody would say that. And then uh, a few days later or something, I was watching Life PD again and another person uses the excuse, I wasn't driving, I'm traveling. That's the dumbest thing. It's so ridiculous. It's so weird that somebody would actually use that as an excuse. And when I read this one about, oh, but I was texting, it's the, it, <laughs> what? It's so ridiculous. I don't know. It's the weirdest thing. Like the last thing that I would do if I was in that situation was be like, oh, but I was texting. You know, it's okay. No, no, it's not okay. It's not okay to text and drive. It's not okay to drive without a license or drive on a revoked license or anything like that. I don't know. It's just so ridiculous. Let's move on to another one. So this one just had me laughing so hard. So this is from a woman who realized that her daughter had some worms in her stool and she was like, oh, we need to, you know, we need to go to the doctor. So this was about 9 p.m. She was going to take her to, like, the emergency. Um, and as she's leaving her home, she gets pulled over. The officer steps out of the vehicle, asks for all the normal, you know, stuff that they ask for, your license, registration, all that kind of stuff. And when he comes back, he says, you've got a taillight out, ma'am. And do you mind telling me why you're out so late? And... Before she can answer, the daughter from the back seat 
says, um, says in a super, super happy voice, I've got butt worms, officer. We need, we need medicine because the butt worms are itchy. <laughs> I read this and I died. It was so funny. Oh my gosh. Um, and apparently the mom's like laughing. The officer's basically in tears and cannot stop laughing because of this girl. I would be the exact same way. I would be laughing. That's the funniest thing. And he ended up leaving her with just a warning and they got to the hospital. They fixed the butt worms. <laughs> uh, she had pinworms and they got medicine, fixed that up real quick. And it's, I don't know. I, I read this and I just died. I was laughing so hard when I first read this. It was a, a difficult for me to read that without just bursting out. It's so funny. Like, so what, are, like on the other end of things, the ones we just talked about, um, they're just people using pure stupidity. <laughs> as excuses whereas this one is just pure funny because this this girl is just so cute and so hilarious and she's like i got butt worms <laughs> and you know that's a that's a more fun story to a police officer than somebody saying oh but i was texting you know i don't know i thought you guys would get a kick out of this at least this story specifically because it is so so funny now let's talk about another one uh, this one's from the UK, and this landlady at a pub ends up needing to call the police station about a brawl that's happening within her pub. Now, keep in mind that there's literally a police station within, like, eyesight from the pub, and they also share the same parking lot. Um, so the landlady calls in to dispatch and she goes, this is the landlady at name of pub. Um, we've got a massive brawl going on. Could you please send help? And the dispatch, the dispatcher says, no problem, but the nearest officers are 30 minutes away. The landlady takes a glance down the street at the like super busy and active police station, then gets back to the dispatch lady and said, isn't there anyone who could get here faster? And the dispatch says, sorry, there isn't. Tell you what, do you think you could keep the fight going until we get there? I mean, come on. I, I I can understand. Okay, I can understand that sometimes, you know, there's a station that's like fully busy. Everything's packed. It's just no one can get there. And there might be cops that are 30 minutes away that are the closest because they don't have anything going on or they just wrapped up something. And so I can understand that. But for the dish, dish, dish pash, good gosh, for the dispatch lady to literally ask this woman to keep a fight going for 30 minutes until an officer gets there is ridiculous. Especially if they're calling because there's a brawl going on and it's gotten out of control to the point where you need to call the police. I mean, why would you want to keep that going for 30 minutes until officers show up? I don't know. It's just, this one gave me a little bit of a giggle and made a little, I don't know, it was ridiculous and I thought you guys would enjoy this one too. Um, yeah, no, if I was that lady, I'd be like, you know what, get somebody down here, this is out of control. Either that, or I I assume they have security people, and I'd get the security people to, like, detain them or something until the police got there, and then they could all explain the stories and whatnot, instead of keeping a brawl going in a pub to make it, you know, just till the cops get there so the cops can do something about it. I don't know. I thought this was super ridiculous. Um, I don't know. I have so many of these stories and they get even more and more ridiculous as they go on. And I think you guys are going to love this. I don't know. I love this. I love cop shows. I love cops. I love, I love live PD. I love all those kind of things. I don't know. I think it's just me. I, do you guys love cop shows? Are you into cop shows? Let me know. Uh, hit me up on the at GSMC underscore Weird News Twitter and the GSMC Weird News Facebook page. Tell me if you love cop shows and why. Or if you don't and why. Um, I've pretty much burnt my husband out of cop shows, but I will continue and to watch them until the end of time. <laughs> I don't know. I enjoy it. I joke around that I like to see my taxpayer dollars at work, but also um, they don't do cops or life PD in my area anymore via something that a governor a long, long time 
made stop because they said it made our city look bad, but <laughs> I don't know. I I love it. I'm going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I'm going to tell some more weird, real police stories. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast. Now, we've been talking about weird stories that are true that are either from police officers or people who have dealt with police officers. So these are all like police weird stories or cops weird stories. I don't know. But let's continue on to the next one. And this one is definitely funny and weird. So let's go to Wisconsin, where in the summer, um, kids still have a curfew, like teens and kids still have a curfew, even though they're not in school. And that's about 11 p.m. Now there's a woman who's driving home at 1 a.m. from work. She's super tired. And a teen dashes out into the middle of the street the woman quickly avoids him trying not to hit uh try not to hit this teen and as she's driving she's right near home but as she's driving off um to pull into her driveway she looks in her rear view mirror and he's flipping her off so she gets home goes to sleep but wakes up the next morning at 9 a.m to a cop knocking at her door and with this cop is the teen from last night and he goes good morning is this your car outside she goes yes and the cop says did you hit this boy with your car last night and she says no and the teen says she's lying arrest her and the cop like shushes the teen and then he turns back to her and says he says you did how about we go down to the station and get this cleared up teen starts looking super smug about it like "Ooh, this girl's gonna go to jail and she goes sure should i bring along the dash cam video that shows this minor after curfew crossing the street in a dark area and staring down at his phone the entire time till i almost hit him now after this lady says that this teen smug look just vanishes all the blood rushes out of his face he's like oh no oh no and the cop says thank you that won't be necessary. When my dear nephew here, and he grabs him by the back of the neck and says, told me that a car practically ran him off the road, I figured I'd better look into it. But I believe you, and I'll make sure he has plenty to do to stay busy until school resumes. Have a nice day, miss. <laughs> They left with the, like, with the officer still holding him tightly by the back of the neck while this boy is begging and pleading to his uncle not to tell his mom or his grandparents or anything like that. <laughs> I thought this was so funny. Now, I've seen stuff like this happen where kids are out way too late and they're doing dumb stuff. I live next to a park where a bunch of kids do dumb things at night they always park there and i really enjoy it when the cops patrol the park so the kids aren't just parking at the park doing things they're not supposed to you know that kind of thing um so when i read this i just started laughing because i was like this could be by my park this could have been me kind of thing <laughs> and it i don't know it's just cracked me up now this one um, I'm going to read from the standpoint of the lady talking about this. 
So this says, I work in a very rural county where there are only one high school and two stoplights. And the main highway that leads into a city across Virginia state lines runs through the middle of town and past the sheriff's department. It's... It's one of those everyone knows everyone kind of towns. Now she, she works at this, uh, police station and she overhears this. Dispatch. Communications to any unit in town. Deputy. Go ahead, communications. Dispatch. Uh, deputy EMS advises that they're behind a wrong way driver heading into town. So apparently this driver was all over the roadway and has nearly run off the road multiple times. They they said it was a possible DWI, and the deputy and trooper practically run towards the door. While their county may be rural, rural, sorry, words, <laughs> the highway is frequented by big rigs and occasional wayward livestock um, at that time. The deputy says, communications, I'll be en route with, uh, with the trooper. And the dispatch says, uh, 10-4, EMS has lights and sirens on, but the driver is not slowing down. The two run out the door just as, um, her co-workers come into the office. Co-worker, oh boy, DWI? And I'm gonna say me, um, talking about the woman that is talking in this. So, me, yep, going the wrong way down the highway. Not even half an hour later, the two return along with the patrol sergeant and in between them, they are escorting the intoxicated woman. Woman, I swear I'm not drunk. Pat- patrol sergeant, ma'am, you just drove nearly five miles the wrong way, f- uh, flew through a red light and almost ran over one of my deputies. Woman, uh, oh, okay, he's okay because I only had one shot. So the trooper says, um... Ma'am, you blew twice the legal limit. The woman says, okay, so it was more than one shot of gin. And the co-worker of the woman that's talking about this says, ooh, she's in so much trouble. And the woman who's explaining the story says, what do you mean? So the co-worker says, her mama is a minister at the church down the street. She's gonna get it. Now this story I found pretty funny because it's from the, it's from the perspective of a police officer, but not from the actual police officer making the arrest. So you're kind of hearing the backstory of this tiny little town who's got this, um, highway that goes through it and they see this woman driving the wrong direction in, on the road who's blowing through stoplights and, uh, nearly hitting people. And so when they bring her in, she's basically like, I wasn't drunk. I don't know what you're talking about. Or maybe I was a little drunk. And then come to find out she's the pastor's daughter. So I thought this was pretty funny because it's from such a small town. So everybody knows everybody. And it was interesting. Um, also really weird. Like not something you would expect, but really weird. I love these stories so much. These um, cop type stories just because weird stuff happens around the world all the time and police officers usually actually get the brunt of it. They get the brunt of the weird and the strange and all that kind of stuff and it just, it cracks me up to see that stuff like this is real. They all sound kind of like, uh, movie bits or something that's from a TV show or something like that. They, cause they don't sound real but they are. There's so many different weird types of people in this world and like I said, cops get the brunt of it. Cops see the weirdest of the weird when it comes to people. I mean, I see some weird people too um, every day and I bet you do as well, but I feel like cops get the brunt of it. Like, um, let's talk about a story where um, it was my wedding day. <laughs> So it was my wedding day and um we were at the reception part. Everything was going good. We were having a great time. And then a friend of mine comes back from, he was getting something out of his motorcycle and he comes back and he goes, you know, there's a fight going on across the street. And I was like, what? And so he showed me the video and cause he, he, he took so long to get his stuff because he was standing out there taking video of this fight and he shows me the video and it's these two people, these two women screaming at each other and then these men screaming at each other and they're full out brawling in the parking lot across from 
the parking lot of the hotel that we were at. And it ended up the cop showed up and arrested some people. But that's the weird of the weird, especially something weird to see on your wedding day. And I can only imagine why they were fighting and what the poor cops had to deal with. Because these people were screaming so, so loud. And it was ridiculous. Now I'm going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk some more weird cop stories. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast. Now, we've been talking, well, I've been telling some weird cop stories from cops or people or from dispatcher point of view, that kind of thing. Now, this one is a doozy. It's a weird one. And I want to read this or like say this story in um, from the person. So when I say I, I'm talking about the police officer. So let's just get this one going. This one time I went out on a call of a suspicious person at a house near I was at. When I get there, the guy tells me that someone knocked on his door and when he went to see who it was, there was a woman standing in his driveway with some sort of child-sized doll with horns and it looked bloody and cut up. So he asked the woman who was looking away, uh, who was looking away from him, uh, what she wanted. She turned around and told him it needs food, then started screaming at the top of her, her lungs and ran at him. So like a normal human being, he slammed the door in her face and called the cops. I get there and there was a well, there was well-defined claw marks on his door. There's also a good bit of blood. I suppose from her fingers. So I call out and start the search on foot. I also had two or three units driving around the area to see if they can't find this chick. So I'm about a block away and we get another call that the woman is is back at that guy's house, but in the backyard. So I run about a block back to the guy's house and bust into the backyard. The lights are out, so I have my flashlight and I'm looking around. I see this chick huddled in the corner next to an evil-looking doll thing, and I ask her if she's okay. She doesn't say anything. About this time, one of my mobile units comes back to the house and parked his unit where the headlights would be shining on her, so we could see how scary this chick looked. She had long black hair, her clothes were rags, she had no shoes, clearly homeless, and she kept whispering things to the doll. So my buddy and I approach and try talking to her, and she kept whispering to the doll. Couldn't understand what she was saying, so we decided to drag her out of there. The second we put hands on this chick, she went berserk. Punching, kicking, slapping, all kinds of stuff. So we're fighting with her to try and get her on the ground, and she's not going down. This chick is strong. Well, in the... In the fight, she somehow got away from us and was sitting in a crouched position with her hands tilted to the side, making the creepiest growl slash snarling sound I've ever heard. Then she screamed at the top of her lungs and charged at us. So my buddy straight jabbed her in the face and knocked her clean out. We cuffed her and hauled her off to the hospital where she tested positive for different types of illegal narcotics. She was charged with battery of a peace officer, resisting arrest, and trespassing. Later, she was institutionalized for some sort of mental disorder. Uh, not quite sure what that, uh, what it was. My department didn't have anything more to do with her after they booked her into jail. 
Now, I thought this one was really interesting because to me, it sounds like something out of a horror movie. Um, I don't know if any of you out there have seen Us, but it reminds me of that, like people standing in your driveway, like, no, 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 not for me. And so I thought it was really interesting that this almost felt like it could be fake and not real, but it was a real thing that happened. Um, let's, let's move on to another one. Now, this one is a little gruesome, but I have a story to go with it, like a personal story. So let's start with this. A traffic policeman I know says that when he attends a road traffic accident, if he sees a shoe that's laying on the ground, he'll kick it first to check the weight before he picks it up. He says he's scared from picking up a shoe that still had a foot in it. Now, okay, let me tell you how this pertains to me and my personal story. So when I was in driver's ed, like a, a long, long, long time ago, um, my driver's ed teacher was a very interesting man. Um, he talked a lot about drugs because he used to be a drug addict and it was real strange. But um, he showed a video that um, I can never get out of my mind and is constantly in my brain. And that video had uh, showed a crash with that involved a bunch of different people. And in that crash, there was a foot still in the a shoe and they show it. Now, I could only imagine being the officer on the scene at this point and, you know, ha picking up a shoe or seeing a shoe with a foot still in it. And that's absolutely terrifying. Um, and I am, like I said, I'm, I'm scarred for the rest of my freaking life <laughs> because of this one video that this, um, driver's ed teacher showed me. And, uh, so when I saw this, I immediately thought back to that and I thought I'd add it in here because it's one of the weirder things that you don't think about happening on site of an accident or something like that, but it does. Now let's move away to something that's a little more on the absolutely weird side. So this is, um, I'm reading it as the person once again, and this says, my brother is a deputy sheriff. He had a call where a frozen dead raccoon was thrown through a window of a mobile home and smashed a glass top coffee table. I, this this happened in Florida, and he he and I quote says, "Yes, we live in Florida. Where else would this happen?" Now, <laughs> I mean, there are places in the U.S. that are really notorious for bad things. I kind of live in one of those states, but um, it's it's funny. And I really thought, like, who thought to pick up a dead frozen raccoon and throw it through the window of a mobile home? Like, who, what? That is the weirdest thing. Could you imagine being the officer on the scene? And you're like, yeah, uh, we got a, a frozen dead raccoon. And um, uh, you're not going to believe this, but somebody threw it through their mobile home and, sla and smashed the glass coffee table. Um, <laughs> I mean, what is weirder than that? <laughs> who in the world is like, oh, look, dead frozen raccoon. Let's chuck this. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's so weird. It's so weird. I mean, all of these are pretty weird, but this one is up there because why? <laughs> this, I guess this whole like podcast is show, showcasing how weird people are and weird things that people do. And I feel like, like I said earlier, that cops really get the brunt of the weirdness um, but it's because they're in a bad situation, usually, or they're in a situation where they see all different types of people way more than you or I see different types of people every day. Like, you think you see different types of people everywhere, and you do, but you're not interacting with every single type of person that you see, and everybody's different, everybody's a little weird, I'm a little weird, that's for sure. <laughs> I got friends that are a little weird, um... My mom, my sister, they're a little weird. I mean, everyone's a little weird. But there are some people that take it to a whole new level when it comes to weird. And the police see those people every single day because they're on a whole other level of weird. And they're getting called either from these odd people or to assist with these odd people. I mean, oh, man. 
Um, my husband used to work at a, um, liquor store or he worked the liquor department in a, uh, like a Walgreens or a CVS, um, type store. And, uh, the people he saw on a daily basis were a complete other monster than the people I was seeing, uh, working while I was working a desk job at, you know, my place. So I, I don't know. People are weird. That's what I'm getting at. Now I'm going to take a quick break. And when we come back, let's talk some more weird cop stories. Check out the show built around the women of MMA from the UFC, Invicta FC, Bellator, and one championship. We got the fights covered. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. the gsmc weird news podcast now before the break and this entire podcast we've been talking about weird cop stories either stories about cops or stories about a cop situation or stories from cops now let's talk about this one this one it cracked me up we did a few heavier ones in before the break and i thought we'd put some funny ones in here so i'm reading it from the perspective of a friend so this friend was at a party and this is what happened so one of my friends is in a frat we were having a party and some guy dressed up as captain jack sparrow the cops show up and the party is on the third floor captain sparrow looks at them when they come in throws open the window and yells, gentlemen, you will forever remember, remember this as the day you almost caught Captain Jack Sparrow and jumped out of the window. He broke both of his legs. <laughs> now it's, it sucks that this guy broke both of his legs. Don't get me wrong, but can we die over the fact that he really tried to be Captain Jack Sparrow? I don't know how, how much partying he had in him, but, um, this is one of the funniest things I've, heard and i thought you guys would enjoy it it's so weird who does this i've seen so many people that have dressed up as captain jack sparrow and they do all the like motions and some of the lines and stuff and you're like yeah that's cool but this guy took it to a whole nother level <laughs> can you imagine being the cops they're just standing there and he's all you'll forever remember this as the day you almost caught captain jack sparrow and then he jumps out the window and they just watch him fall they're like, oh man, but we caught Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> I don't know. This is funny to me. Let's move on to another one. So this one is about a noise complaint. Now I'm reading this as the police officer because the police officer is telling this story. And he says, got a noise complaint call where the neighbors informed dispatch. Um, the parents are out of town and um, suspect underage drinking and or possible drug use. And he says these types of calls are the worst because you can almost guarantee someone is puking in the back of your car, um, which, yeah, I could understand that. Um, so he says we roll up, throw the overheads on to scatter as many people as possible and make a slow walk up to the front door. We play the nobody's home game for a while until one of the kids lets the partner in the back door. We subsequently find around 12 teenager and teenagers and what appears to be multiple bottles of rum and vodka as well as several baggies containing marijuana and some pills. Upon further inspection, we find the liquor bottles have been emptied and filled with water. The marijuana is actually oregano and parsley and the pills were just aspirin. They were having a pretend party to put on social media, but the strangest thing in the room was a Red Bull. So this is one of the weirdest things because 
I guess if you want to look cool, you throw a fake party with fake drugs and alcohol and then you post it on social media. I don't know. It's the weirdest thing. And in this day and age of social media just in general, I can understand that a lot of people probably do this. But I think it's so ridiculous. They just want to look cool to their friends or cool at school or something like that and be like, yeah, we had this super dope party and uh, we we did a lot of alcohol and drugs and whatnot. But really, they're just taking pictures with water and pantry spices and aspirin. Um... <laughs> I don't know. I thought this was so weird. This is one of the weirdest things. I mean, people do weird things. When I was younger, people never did this. Um, but I see now with social media, it's a whole nother level of things. We didn't really do social media when I was younger. And now I can understand they're just trying to look cool and it's a dumb way to go about it. Now let's move on to another story. This one's pretty funny. Um, so this is, um, from, a person saying it because their dad was on the force. So this is their dad's story. Um, I'm going to be reading as the son and or daughter. <laughs> so this person says that his dad's been a cop for almost 30 years now and he loves his job because he gets to be in the community and make a difference. Anyway, so he, he says uh, his dad gets a phone call one night about some teenagers vandalizing a park. Dispatch lets him know that it's a lady that calls 24-7 thinking she's the neighborhood watch. So as he cruises in towards this park, he comes in all lights blacked out watching from a distance. After a couple minutes of watching, he realizes these people are playing hide and seek. They also look a lot older than just teenagers. He gets out of the car, sneaks up to some of them hiding in the group behind the trees and bushes. Uh, my dad hunkers down behind them and one of them looks back and sees my dad. Um, <laughs> so the kid freaks out and starts to run and my dad grabs him and says, dude, shut up or the other team will find us. <laughs> the guys crack up and cause now they realize my dad is down to win this game. He ends up playing hide and seek with the group of 21 year olds for the next hour. The best part about or the best part was about six months later, I was having a Halloween uh, shindig at my house and my dad stops by because he wants to score some burgers off of us while he's at work. He walks in and a guy at the party is like, oh my gosh, your dad is, is officer blank. He played hide and seek with us. Now I thought this was like super fun because I... <sighs> The one thing that bothers me about police is a lot of times they're really kind of conveyed as these bad guys. I They're not bad guys. That's just really what it comes down to. They're not bad guys. They're just there to serve and protect and, you know, they're doing their job. Let them do their job. You got a job. You do your job. That kind of thing. And so it's really nice to see police officers like this one who um, loved helping out his community and on top of that saw that, you know, this call was kind of bogus and just joined in to play the game and have some fun. I I enjoy that a lot. I um I had recently in the past few months gone to Best Buy and they always have police officers at my Best Buy. I don't know if they have police officers at the Best Buy near you guys. Let me know if they do. Let me know at the um Twitter at JSMC underscore weird news and the JSMC Weird News Facebook. I'm always on there and I love to talk to you guys. Tell me if uh, if you guys have ever had a or an experience with a police officer that was really kind and nice, or if you have a weird story like this, like tweet me at JSMC underscore weird news or just hit me up on the Facebook and let me know. I'm really curious. I want more of these stories because they're so fun. Um, and I'd like to hear your guys' good encounters. Not just bad encounters, but good encounters with police officers. I'm... I've had some good encounters. Let's uh, let's bring it back to what I was saying. I was at Best Buy and I was um, waiting at the front for them to bring my uh, uh, item to me because it was very large. And I was also waiting for my husband to bring the truck so we could put it in there. And um, while I'm there, the 
a police officer just stood there and had a conversation with me and my friend and it was a lot of fun. Um, and he was just the nicest person. And I really enjoy when cops are doing their jobs and also take the time to be nice to everybody, which doesn't always happen, but you do understand that they're always on high alert because they're on the job, they're ready to go, and that kind of thing. But a lot of times they are really good, really friendly, and we're just not giving them the chance that they deserve to show that, you know, they're people just like me and you. Having authority doesn't mean that you're, you know, on a different level from everybody else. (laughs) Now I'm going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk some more weird cop stories. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast. Now, before the break and this entire podcast, we've been talking about weird cop stories from the, either this, per, this perspective, excuse me, I'm losing my words, um, but either from the perspective of a police officer or somebody who is involved in the incident or even dispatch, kind of that kind of thing. So let's move on and talk about some college kids. Now, this is from the perspective of one of the people that got the police called on them. Um, and I'll be reading it in their perspective. <laughs> While in college, we got the police called on us for a violent crime in progress. When they pounded on our door, we opened and they barged in. The neighborhood or the neighbor reported hearing people yelling things like, shut up, I'm going to kill you. Um, and stuff along those lines, along with a girl screaming profanities. When the cops saw it was three guys and a girl drinking and playing Halo, um, <laughs> the one just looks at the other in sheer disbelief. The cops start to tell us that we're called in for an attack in progress and tell us how we need to be more careful and whatnot because it could end up, it could have ended badly. During this time, my friend is still on the headset and the other guys were playing, uh, that we were playing with are wondering what's going on. Um, and the friend says, with the uh, with the cop in the room we are apparently attacking you so badly someone had to call the cops and the cops just couldn't hold it and started cracking up they did give us a warning but no citations now this cracks me up because in my household we play a lot of video games um i sometimes if i'm playing video games get to the point where i am also that girl screaming profanities not so much though anymore but we love to play video games in this house and um (laughs) we there's there's been a lot of yelling when it was me and uh my husband and we had two roommates um it it was always just uh (laughs) a yelling match from somebody or a like a raging because they're so mad kind of thing and even my one roommate that we have now uh he he will game really late at night and yell all sorts of things i'm so used to it at this point that it's you know i don't really hear it anymore but it's really funny um and it's never in actual ill will towards anybody it's just it's just all in good fun Now let's talk about another one. This one is by a cop in the Air Force, and it's from his perspective. He says, it wasn't illegal, but really suspicious. I was a cop in the Air Force. We had just gone into a higher threat level, and around 11 o'clock at night, I saw three people in an empty dark field near some power lines with shovels and a garden hoe. 
My partner and I decided to stop them and see what was going on, because it didn't look like civil engineering or anyone that should be there at that hour. So we go up and see that they're all about 14 to 15 years old, and they're all sweating and out of breath. We ask what they're digging for, and they say they weren't digging, which after looking around, we didn't see any dug up dirt. So my partner asks what they're doing, and they the hesitantly they hesitantly answer that they were LARPing. <laughs> One of their dads shows up and scolds them, telling them how shady they look, apologizes to us, and we send them all back to the dad's house, which was about a hundred yards away. I hold back la- laughter until I get in the car, where I have to explain to my partner what what LARPing is and why I'm laughing. Now, if you don't know what LARPing is, it is live action role playing, and you'll see LARPers at I see them at this one specific park all the time, and so it's basically like D and D, Dungeons and Dragons, but um live action and people are using foam equipment as swords and stuff and they usually dress up and it's a whole scenario um i've personally never larped before but i play a good D. &D. i love D. &D. um and so when i saw this one was about larping i just about died laughing um (laughs) my question is why did they what were they using the shovel and the garden hoe for probably as like weapons They're like 14 or 15, so I doubt they were thinking, maybe we should use foam weapons. And they were like, let's go LARP. (laughs) So I thought this one was pretty funny, and I thought it was funny that he had to actually explain to his partner what LARPing was and why it was so funny. Now let's move on to another one. So this one is about something that happened, and the uh, person telling the story is the brother of who this happened to. So it says, or he says, my brother was once jumping his bike off the end of a public boat dock behind the city hall, which is also, which also housed our police station. They had it tethered so it wouldn't get lost on the bottom. A cop came out, watched for a while and said, I'm fairly certain something about this is illegal, but I can't figure out what, and it looks like fun. So be safe and walk back inside. I don't know. I thought that was pretty funny that he's like, maybe there's something illegal about this, but I can't figure it out right now. So just go do your own thing. (laughs) I think, I don't know. That's just so funny. Um, Let's pull up one more. And this one comes from Australia and it is told by the officer. So, He was a police officer in Australia for seven years. Um, We got a call about kids, probably 11 or 12, jumping across backyards. They were looking for things to steal, I guess. We searched for them for about 15 minutes. Just as I was starting to get bored with it, I heard laughter coming from a drain pipe that's about four foot tall. My mate and I decide to head in. About 30 meters down down the tunnel, I come see this kid bent over on all fours with his pants around his ankles. His mate uh, is bent over, uh, sitting on his back, spreading the first kid's cheeks. <laughs> There's a third kid kneeling next to the first kid's butt, holding a lighter. They were in the midst of lighting farts in a dark tunnel. <laughs> I have, I had no clue what to say. We told them to come out of the drain with us. I advised them not to tell any of their other friends what they had gotten up to since they would probably get the wrong reputation and drove them within a block of the kids' houses so the parents didn't know they'd been caught. Now, I thought this was really funny that they, they call on these kids who are perceived to be stealing things out of yards only to be in the, um, drain. <laughs> or the drain pipe, um, lighting farts on fire. (laughs) Now, I don't know. (laughs) That's a dangerous thing, but it's also, like, really funny. Could you imagine being that cop and just being like, yeah, so, what? What what are you doing down here? (laughs) Or could you imagine him, like, having to write the report and, like, telling somebody about it, and he's like, he's like, yeah, so I was looking for these kids, found them in a, down in a tunnel, and they were lighting farts on fire. Now, I saw this um, in this actual uh, P, 
piece that this officer had said, he called the lighting the farts on fire, uh, doing blue angels. <laughs> I have never heard that term before. I've never, but it's now one of my favorites. Um, it said, um, when I was reading his story, it said, uh, doing blue angels and then in parentheses lighting farts. And I know what lighting farts is, but I didn't know that they called it blue angels and I thought that was weird. And kids are weird. Kids are some of the strangest, but they also have no filter. So I, so they kind of just do what they want and they say what they want and they really don't care because they have no filter and no uh, perception of, I don't know, they, they think that they're invincible. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Let's take a quick break, and when I come back, maybe I'll tell you guys some of my cop stories. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere where you find podcasts just type gsmc in the search bar back to the gsmc weird news podcast now before the break and this entire podcast we've been talking about weird cop stories from the perspective of police officers or from people who were involved in the stories or also like sons or daughters of police officers and stuff like that now i wanted to talk about one more of the stories that i found i found so many honestly that i could do a whole nother podcast of this but i'm going to talk about one more and then i want to share some experiences that i've had with the police so let's talk about this one so this is um from a brother of a police officer telling the bro uh, the police officer's story it says my brother was a cop who worked nights in minneapolis one snowy night year, near the U of M campus, he noticed a car weaving, so he pulled them over thinking that there would be alcohol involved. Nope, it was a car full of deaf people having an argument, which included the driver. He just told the driver not to sign and drive. I thought that was pretty funny and kind of cute, so I I wanted to include it. Um, Now, let's talk about some inner encounters that i've had with police officers let's start with one of the ones when i was 18 17 or 18 i was driving home with my sister and we were out way later than we should have been but i was driving home with my sister and there was a cop pulled off to the right of the uh, like pulled somebody over to the right of the street we were on this street had two uh two lanes for each direction and I was in the right lane and I had never been taught by my driving instructor with who I talked about earlier um that you need to pull over to the left lane um and go around instead of going that way because it could be dangerous I was never told that so I just kept driving he was just finishing up he ended up pulling me over and I was terrified. This was the first time I'd ever been pulled over. I was like full panic, but my adrenaline just hit. It hit so hard. So um we get pulled over. My sister's freaking out. I'm like adrenaline pumping so calm. It's uneasy. Uh, he comes to the door. He says, you could have killed me. I have a family, all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't know about that. Then he makes me get out of the car and perform a sobriety test because I had had this bottle of, of Febreze in the back of my car that had broken and the Febreze was everywhere. And he thought that kind of smelled like alcohol. So I did the sobriety test. Everything was fine. He let me off with a warning and I went home. And the whole time my sister's panicking because we were so close to home as it is. And we were out way later than we should have been. And he's, 
or I'm driving, she's panicking. I am still adrenaline rushing so hard all the way home. And I really actually don't think my parents know about this, but I, if they listen to this now, they know. <laughs> but we never told them because we never got any sort of actual ticket or anything like that. It was just a warning, don't do this again, blah, blah, blah. And then he left. Um, so that was the first time I was ever pulled over and that was terrifying. Now, I want to talk about a time when I lived in an apartment with my now husband. He was my boyfriend at the time then. And a bunch of other people. We had too many people crammed in one apartment. That's just how it went. And um, we were, I was going, I was in bed with my husband. We were going to sleep because we both had work the next day. But we had friends over who were playing video games and whatnot in the living room. Next thing I know, I hear a tapping on my window in the bedroom. And I'm like, what is going on? So uh, my husband goes and checks it and it's the SWAT team. They said, you need to open a window. We need to come in. And I was like, why? What's going on? And so uh, he goes over to the living room and opens the window. And uh, instead of the li- the one in our bedroom... Uh, he goes to the living room, opens the window, and SWAT just starts filing in our window. They told everybody to get to the back of the apartment, which is where our bedroom was. He told everyone, get to the back of the apartment, you need to stay there. And it was late. It was like maybe 2.30 a.m. And we are, like, I'm in, in the bedroom, and my husband comes back to the bedroom, and he explains to me what's going on, and I'm like, oh, okay, what? And so we both kind of go out. Um, and are talking to some of our guests and roommates and stuff. And the SWAT was just came in. It turned out that somebody in an apartment next to us who they couldn't get to, uh, had barricaded himself in the home and they needed to, you know, get in there, but try and get around as sneaky as possible. And that's why they went through our window. Now I want to talk about one more after, since those two were the heavier ones and this one was probably the funniest encounter I've ever had with a police officer. So we were at that same apartment and we were watching Braveheart on the TV. Pretty loud. And next thing I know, I hear a banging on my front door and we're like, what is going on? And then we hear police. And so we were like, okay, got to open the door. We opened the door and the police officer said that they had gotten a call to a domestic disturbance. And we were like, wait, what? And it was like me and two other, or no, me, my husband and two other people who were just watching Braveheart in the living room. Nobody else was in the house. And he was like, um, I don't, can I come in? And we were like, yeah, come in. Um, And we were talking to them and we were like, honestly, all we've been doing is watching Braveheart. Maybe it was just a little too loud and they thought the screaming from Braveheart was us. And so that's what it turned out to be. It turned out that these people that lived in an apartment near us had called the police on us because we were listening to Braveheart really loud and the window had been cracked and they thought we were fighting with each other, but it was literally just Braveheart. The cops were super nice and super great. They were like, have a good day. Maybe close your window, turn it down a little bit, you know, and they left and they left to talk to the person and obviously nothing came from it after that. But literally, we got the cops called because we were watching Braveheart. I don't know. This is probably the most ridiculous cop encounter I've ever personally had. Um, it was just so ridiculous. So now I actually don't think I've watched Braveheart since, but now I know just be weary of how loud your TV is and if your windows are open because people can hear it. <laughs> now I, I want to hear your guys's, um, different police stories, like things that you've been a part of, or maybe you have a friend or a loved one who is a police officer and they've got some weird stories, send those to me um, at GSMC underscore weird news on Twitter or at the GSMC weird news uh, Facebook page. I'm on both of those constantly all the time. Um, I love to hear your feedback and I love to hear your weird stories. So just let me know if, if any sort of weird cop experiences have happened to you or if you've heard of some weird ones or there are bigger weird ones that I didn't find or at least didn't talk about in this specific podcast because I love that stuff I love cop shows I said that a million times I think 
on this podcast, not even this specific one, but on other podcasts, I talk about how much I like uh, cop shows. So I would definitely like to hear you guys' stories. I also want to know if you guys like cop shows and if so, why? And if you don't, and why you don't. I'm just curious. Like I said earlier, I, I totally burnt my husband out of cop shows because that's like all I watch. I have a problem. Send help. <laughs> but for real, I, I love them. They're so much fun to watch. I, I guess I like getting into the mind of a police officer. I also don't think I could be a police officer. First off, super tiny, not fit. Um, <laughs> second off, I don't think I could run that fast if I needed to. And it just seems like a really, really dangerous job. Now, I want to seriously thank you guys for, like, listening to me ramble about weird cop things and weird, and listening to me read these weird cop stories to you. I know it's a little different than what we usually do here on this podcast, but it, I thought they were really strange and they were really interesting to talk about. Now, once again, I want to thank you guys so, 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 so much for listening to the GSMC Weird News Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Colleen, and I will talk to you in the next one. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.